Hello there folks. This quick video today is going to show you how to create an internal counter that keeps track of the number of days since the last work related injury. We have a number of customers now that are using our productivity station or a black box to show plant floor marquee information uh, to workers and one of the uh, statistics they'd like to show up on the screen is the number of days since the last work related injury. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take advantage of the real-time clock inside the Redline products to, to compute a new day and then increment a counter for us. So we're going to start off first, we're going to go over the left hand side and we're going to click data tags on the left side and we're going to create a new tag here. Just create a new tag and let's call this tag a new day. This tag we'll call new day. Every time there's a new day I'm going to increment some kind of counter. However, I need to make this thing keep track of the, the days. And so the way that I've been thinking about doing this is if I go over to the lower right hand side of Crimson and go down to the system section here and in the system section if I expand the functions tree of the resource pane and then if I come down and expand for instance the tree category or not tree I'm sorry the time category you're gonna see that there's all kinds of pre-built functions that are in here and one of them happens to be uh, the get hour functions this one here will tell us the current hour if I just drag this out here like this if I drag the get hour out here and drag it onto the word internal what that's going to do is it's going to show me the current hour um, right now of that particular unit well I want this thing to be updating all the time so here in the parentheses where it says zero I'm going to type get now open close parentheses and then enter so if you look at the screen there's a get hour and then open parentheses get now open close and then one more close parentheses so basically that is going to keep track of the military time in hours 0 100 200 up to 22 1 2200 hour 2300 hour and then it's going to cycle over to 0 at midnight so if I say all right that's going to work for that and then if I go to the triggers tab for that and on the triggers tab if I sit here in trigger mode disabled choose data match whenever this thing equals zero that means I've rolled over to basically 12 a.m. so I'll put a value here of zero so whenever that equals the new a.m. then down here in the action is where I want to increment some kind of a daily counter so down here I might type days equals days plus one so I've got a formula here every time it cycles to zero days plus days plus one here is what I'm gonna have so if I hit enter watch what crimson does it's gonna ask me to declare a variable which this is really neat in crimson 3 because you can just create tags on the fly and I'll say yes to that and you're gonna see there's a new counter over here a new new integer value over here on the left called days alright so that takes care of the day counter there maybe I should also have though some kind of way for me to reset the counter in the event that there was uh, a uh, uh, injury or something. So in that case, I'm going to hit the pole down here to the next to the word new, and I'm going to declare a flag tag, and I'm going to rename this one reset days counter. And I might move this down. It doesn't have to be in order, but whenever this guy goes on, I'm going to reset the days counter. So if I go over to the triggers tab for this guy, and down here where it says trigger mode disabled, I'll hit the pull down here and choose active on, meaning whenever this is on, I want my days to equal zero. That will reset it. Whoops, hold on, I spelled wrong team. That's actually supposed to be days, not daisy. Days, space, equals zero, enter. Okay. And then what I'd like to do is, uh, I need a way to reset this thing back to zero. So down here on the other trigger, I might say when it's also active on, after 2,000 milliseconds, I might want my reset underscore days underscore counter to equal zero. This will automatically set it back. Okay. Now before I move on, uh, one more thing I'd like to do. If I click on my days counter here on the left, and go to the data format or the data tab for that guy I'd like to make that retentative because if I have a power loss or something and uh, I certainly would like the screen to come up 
with the last number of counts so that uh, we don't lose keep track of you know a number of days without an injury uh, and you know some plants can't have a they don't have a power off power outage that often but certainly want to lose 300 days and go what happened to our counter it started back at zero so go ahead and make the days counter be retentive and that way the red line product will retain the value in the event there was a power loss so if I go over to display pages on the left here's my page I'm gonna go ahead and go to the right side and go to data tags on the right side and I'm gonna drag my days counter out and I'll place it right here my day tag and I might make this guy a little bigger so you can see it and I'll bold it like so so that's gonna be bigger there then I might also want to show you the actual new day so you can see what it looks like you won't need to display this on the page but I'm just gonna show it here for you as well and then I need a, a button tag that will let me reset the day counter so if I go over here to the right side and click primitives on the right side and I'm gonna go into the category called core primitives up here on top core primitives and the primitive in here I like to use quite a bit in class is one two three four five rows down from the top over on the left hand side is the bevel button if I click on the bevel button one time there's all these pre-built colored ones so you can change the color these are just some of the predefined and maybe I'll take the blue one and I'll drag it out here like this I might make this guy a little bigger this is gonna be my reset button so I'm gonna right click on this guy and go to properties and if I go to the text tab for it go to the text tab I'm gonna change right here where it says text reset days counter now if you notice folks I've got a blue background with black lettering very hard to read the contrast is not very good so down here where it says text color I'm gonna change that to be white for the background and then I always like to teach in class I like to use the more tab because on the more tab down here where it says direction I like to turn this on down and right that way when the operator actually presses this we get some physical movement which uh, acknowledges to the operator that the screen registered what he did and then if I go to the action tab on the action tab down here where it says no action I'm gonna choose a push button type of operation and right in this field here where it says button data let me move this over here a little bit so you can see I'm gonna go over here to the right side and I'm gonna grab the tag called reset days counter and I'm gonna drag this guy right down here into the button data field like so that should take care of it and I'll click OK and then just to show you that's working, let's make this font a little bigger, guys. Hold on here. Make that a little bigger so we can see it. And I'm going to put the uh, the other reset counter on the screen just so you can see this number change from uh, from when I, when I press this to off or to on and then off again. So let's go ahead and download this to the screen. Let's see. Oh, you know what else I'd like to do? I'm going to put the the real time clock down here so you can see the actual clock that's in our product so if I go over here to the right side and click primitives on the right side if I go up one directory I'm still in my core primitives but I'm in the core primitives here and then if I slide all the way down to the bottom over here on the right hand side there is a time and date primitive if I just drag this guy out here like this and maybe I'll make this guy a little bigger like this and I'll make the font larger this should show us the current time maybe I'd also like this to show seconds because I'm going to show you something else here in a minute so if I go over here and go to the format tab for this guy and down here where it says uh, time only uh, that's okay there but down here uh, I want to show seconds ah, here show seconds say yes alright let's go ahead and click OK go ahead and download this to the screen and let's take a look and see what happens alright now if I pull up my web page here okay I was actually already playing with this earlier so it retained the demo I was already doing earlier let me reset the counter here so you can see this thing went from on to off a few seconds later and currently I'm looking at the the hour is 11 well for the demo instead of me waiting until midnight tonight for this to roll over and this change let's look at this in terms of seconds so if I go back to the tag click on data tags on the left side click on the new day guy and instead of it giving me the current hour let's get rid of the hour here and let's time the word seconds or seconds there 
And now it'll show us this in seconds. Let's go back to our page. Go ahead and download this to the screen. And let's take a look now. All right. So in this case, when this thing runs over to zero, we should have the counter should automatically change. Let's see what happens here. You can also see the real time clock down here. But at 59, zero right here, goes to one. So that would simulate uh, midnight, a day since injury and so forth. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video for a second, and let it get to the next time. All right, so here we come up on about 55 seconds. This next time rolls over, we should get this to two. There you go, it's auto increment again. So let me go ahead and let this uh, sit for a few more minutes and let's see if we get that counter up to a bigger number here. And as you can see folks, I've let a couple more minutes go by since the last time. And you can see the increment of the counter back up to seven and so forth. So if we pretend that we actually had an accident, we reset the day counter and you see it goes back to zero and the new day would continue to track on. Uh, to return this back to actually showing per day, I'm going to go back to the new day tag and right here where it says again I changed that to word seconds so we can see a little quicker. Just change this back to the word hour and now the actual demo itself would track the number of uh, days and change only at midnight tonight. So that's just a quick way to use the real time clock to increment the number of days gone by since the last work related injury. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. See ya.